Our emergency room is a pretty large volume, inner city emergency room, so we kind of see the sickest of the sick. How I see COVID, the COVID-19 outbreak at first hand is, is by uh, first responder calls and medical calls to people that are symptomatic. We were facing the same kind of problems all the hospitals were. We didn't have enough protective equipment. We're trying to figure out how to, how to stretch our resources, how to prepare. Within healthcare, this pandemic is certainly a, a tremendous opportunity for us all to say, why are we doing it this way and how can we do it better? There's a whole cohort of current professionals who came up through um, Outward Bound style, wilderness medicine style cultures, whose pathway into this job was not through either the sense you're gonna make a lot of money or the sense that your parents did it or that you wanted to be an important person in the community. We are almost always using skills of communication, um, persuasion, leadership, community building. Those are things that are inherent to the Outward Bound experience. Why do you want to go to medical school? You know the whole thing about the comfort zone, stretch zone, panic zone? That was medical school every single day. And it felt like a natural extension from Outward Bound. If you just go back to the field, oh my God, we don't know where we are. Okay, let's not have a meltdown. Let's just, let's just slow our thinking down. You know what to do, figure it out, and move forward. You know, being in that space of uncertainty before, uh, I think certainly has like kind of prepared me for, for where I'm at right now um, and, and being comfortable not, not knowing the best answer, but, um, you know, making a decision. Um, and that's why I went into emergency medicine in the first place, was because you get in those situations all the time. <laughs> you know, we just have to, we have these basic tools, and we're like, all right, figure out how to change this for the better. You know, so it's really similar work, you know, working in groups in dynamic, time-sensitive, sometimes high-stress environments. You know, it's, it's, um, it's just like leading groups or being in a group of people in the woods or in the mountains. But I certainly take that with me into, into um, emergency, the emergency services and firefighting, just that comfort with being uncomfortable in unknown situations. The, the sense of like, well, it's like this right now, but this too will change. The hallmark of experience education is that every, every encounter with a real situation is unique and is different than the theoretical idea of what it would be like. So we never really knew what, what it would mean to try to um, flatten the curve by having social distancing and, and keep people at home. The last time we tried to do that was in 1918. It is having a hammer effect on every single human interaction, human condition, human situation across the globe. And no one really knows what the right answer is. But that creates a window, for, a window of opportunity for change. And people are excited about the possibilities. <laughs> it's like being in a massive storm or something, you know, out in the crew and everyone sort of steps up a bit. Uh, because they, they have to, and it's very focusing. The here and now is very focusing for people. It's, it's such a high perfection game that we're playing here. You know, you really just can't make mistakes. You gotta, it's like climbing, really. I mean, you gotta pay attention. You, you can't take your eye off the thing. You can't wander, you can't lose your concentration, um, or you kill somebody. We know that uh, those of us who are considered essential and still going to work in the middle of a pandemic to treat um, people who are ill are not thinking that's the safest thing to do. It's the right thing to do. and We want to prepare ourselves as safely as possible to do it. Now, when I come home from my shifts, I go through like an airlock kind of procedure where you know, I go in my basement door and I shed all my clothes and I take a shower and we wash them separately. You know, we're all coming into contact with it. and. It's definitely like uh, wearing on people, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty about the best way to protect yourself. To protect my family, my, I have like a nine month old baby from, uh, from infection. If I'm not taking care of myself, I, I can't take care of anybody else. If I was ever on like a bush push or uh, just having a crappy day, like day five of rain straight in North Carolina mountains or, you know, just like super windblown in the Everglades, like 
I was the one I still had to put on like a happy face and kind of look look strong for for my kids and you know show them how to take care of themselves. Really, this is one of the first times we've ever tasked the public to be as involved with a healthcare initiative, which I think is really emphasizing the benefits of being crew, not passengers. So we're asking people to do real work um, in this time and make sacrifices. The great outdoors is closed right now, <laughs> but the values that underpin everything that all around does are super compelling. And the opportunities for, for self-reliance and compassion and uh, craftsmanship would be equally eminent as we, I don't know, learn the ukulele or send nice messages to people that we care about. As out of industry, because you can be asking those questions of people and inspiring them in this moment and supporting them to ask questions about what they can do to uh, and what they're learning as they try to do those things. It's totally relevant. It doesn't have to happen in the field on an expedition. I don't know. I mean, I still think about Outward Bound every day, almost every day of my life. I raised my kids like Outward Bound, of course. I have no idea what I would have done, how I would have progressed through life had I not been able to spend all those years in Outward Bound, because they have influenced everything. We will get through this. There is going to be an end to this. This is this may be the hardest test you face in your life. It may not be, but you've got the wherewithal. You've got the character you've got the skills thank you for staying home thank you for helping us flatten the curve you literally have i can't tell you how many hundreds of thousands of lives have been saved you know we know we're going to make it one way or another whether it's going to be comfortable or whether it's going to be the way i planned it to or wanted to, wanted to be is a totally different story I'm hopeful. I think that hopefulness is probably um, a big piece of 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 what I took out of my time at NCOB.